it's late on a Saturday night and you have to send in that acoustic guitar part because your client asked you, but you do not have an acoustic guitar or you don't know how to play one or you cannot afford a musician and your client has not included that in the budget because, you know, life. Uh, what do you do? Well, Hey guys, this is Irvik and welcome to this multi-part series where I teach you how to become a slicing and dicing loop creating fruit ninja. Uh, I don't know how many parts there are going to be in this series so uh, it, it could expand in the future so you guys let me know in the comments if you want to see anything specific with respect to programming. I know you guys want to jump in and get into the meat and potatoes of like how to actually program extremely realistic stuff but before we get that there are a few things to understand first all right point number one understand how the instrument in question works the first problem I notice with a lot of music programmers is that they program something generic for a generic instrument and then replace it with another instrument and then another one and they're like oh that sounds nice I think I'm gonna keep it well this isn't going to work you need to remember that a music instrument is being played by a real musician, right? There's a real person who's behind it. Uh, so you have to, in order to get a realistic music programming performance, you need to be able to emulate what the person is actually doing and how he's interacting, he or she or they or them, with their instrument. Let me tell you how far this problem has gone. Hans Zimmer, one of the greatest film composers of our time, if not the greatest film composer of our time, programs all of his stuff into a piano roll on his door of choice. And then he has some copyist write down the sheet music and then have musicians play it and then records them. So as a result, you get very boring sounding scores that don't have a, lo a lot of life in them as compared to say, John Williams or Michael Guccino. But when you have Hans Zimmer sit down with the musician, and actually interact with them and create a sound that was specifically meant to be played by a certain instrument. It sounds amazing. I mean, this isn't about just writing music. This is about painting sound. For example, a violin can be sustained indefinitely. A piano has the largest note range of any instrument that exists. Then the next thing, understand the limitations of each instrument. Most people forget that when they program music, there's supposed to be someone at the other end of that instrument actually playing this instrument. And there are limitations that come with this. For example, a pianist only has 10 fingers, so he can only play a maximum of 10 notes at a time. And that is quite rare and difficult to do. Or if you're programming a realistic sounding flute, uh, it makes no sense to draw the notes out continuously and sustain them for unrealistically long periods of time because, I mean, the guy who's playing it has got to draw breath at some time, doesn't he? Likewise, every instrument has its own caveats and limitations. But that's not a bad thing. If you are able to express these limitations and these caveats in your programming, you get a very convincing and realistic sounding performance. This is very useful when you're programming and writing cinematic music. Another example is that a drummer only has four limbs, two hands, two legs. So if you program something in which the floor tom, the rack tom, the snare and the hi-hat are hit simultaneously, then it's like the drummer is actually not just playing with his hands, but he's playing with his legs as well, right? But the problem is the legs are only reserved for the kick drum and the hi-hat. <laughs> Sorry, I just had an image in my mind and I had to show it to you guys. Anyway. Ditch the automated piano roll features like humanize or articulate. Well, using these is a very down and dirty way of like getting your programming to sound realistic. It is not the way to go. If you want to make your performance sound convincing, then you're gonna have to put in a bit of work into it. If you're not willing to suffer for your craft, then maybe you shouldn't be doing it at all. Ditch the MIDI keyboard. Yep, I said it. Well, not entirely. If you're actually comfortable playing the keys, and you're very slow at programming and you need to get your idea down as soon as you can, then it makes sense to program the, the starting of your idea on the piano. Then you should ditch the MIDI keyboard and then start writing down and laying down the details in manually. This is important because this allows you to think how convincing or to think about the fine details about how you want your performance to sound like.
So two more things before we get into the meat and the potatoes. Uh, first, you can use any DAW of your choice. It doesn't matter so long as it has all the basic programming features in it. And the second, you need to know all of your piano roll's basic features. If it does not have the features that are required, then you might as well have switched to another DAW of choice. One more thing, uh, I have put a bunch of free plugins that I think will be useful for you in the tutorials to come in the description below. Uh, you do not need any high-end plugins to create a high-end sound. That's just up to you and how much time you're willing to invest in it. And now that we're armed and dangerous, why don't we get down to the first video? 